What's up? This is Keith Kelfus, the Landscaping Employee Trap YouTube channel where I give how-to motivational tips, advice, and inspiration on how to start your own damn business from the ground up and leave a shitty 9 to 5 job. How to go from being flat broke and struggling and frustrated to actually making a good living for yourself. If you've got 20 minutes so you can spare it to watch this video, if you grew up flat broke with a victim mindset and you're maybe struggling financially, um, I want you to watch this video because I believe that it can help you because there's a certain part in the middle of this video where I hope you get an aha and it kind of breaks your mind free because I want you to do well and make uh, a better life and, and make good money and, and I've been through hell man, <laughs> and I can't believe where I'm at today compared to where I used to be and that says wow I'm gonna go even farther now and I want you to break free and go far I want you to go far so uh, watch this video It's kind of a long video but as I break it down and unpack it you'll see you'll see why how growing up poor can really do a number and screw up your belief systems how damaging it can be to grow up as a poor kid how that can screw up your adulthood and how you see money financially all right enjoy What's up? This is Keith Kelfus. I just peeled myself out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning right now because I gotta make this video, this night video. If you watch my channel long enough for a long time, you know that I used to do this all the time. I'd make these crazy night videos. Well, I gotta tell you this, and I gotta ask you a question. Are you struggling financially? Are you not making the money that you want to make? Are you feel like you're grasping and you're gripping and you're stressed out over bills and money all the time to the point where it's ripping you apart and you're giving everything that you have and no matter how much you give it's just it's just like when when is this increase going to come like when is when are you going to get to that next level where you you finally get some freaking money in the bank it's winter now and what if what if you don't have whatever x amount money in the bank and I'm I'm just Follow with me for a minute. This is very important because I want to tell you a story. Uh, you know, enough money in the bank for the winter. It, whether you do or don't do snow, because we're if a seasonal business. I'm in the Midwest. There ain't no landscaping going on in the winter when there's snow on the ground. There is windows to clean. I do window cleaning also. And those that you that do windows that watch my channel, you know. But but well, you know what I'm saying. If you don't do snow in your first couple years in your business, you might not have the money in the bank. You might have to get a winter job or do winter gigs or something. I know when I first started in the, the business, I was remodeling basements. I never talked about this. Uh, working with friends. I was doing anything that I could possibly do to, to make ends meet in the winter. I was scared shitless because, you know, aside from plowing snow, I always plowed snow in the winter. I've been plowing snow since I was a kid, right? But um, this is what I want to ask you, and I want to tell you this story paradigm the paradigm in which you come from can install a virus into your mind and your emotions and make you think if you're born in a scarcity mindset if you're born flat broke in a broke family who's you know is on welfare maybe uh, nine to fivers or welfare you know family with a lot of issues and 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 you didn't come from like a well-to-do family that was very positive and supportive and you know maybe paid for your college or whatever nothing against that that's great but an abundance mindset that I'm talking about versus a scarcity mindset um, then you might be uh, dealing with old negative programming that doesn't serve you and actually hurts you and hurts your business and your family and makes you suffer because of what you came from is controlling you behind the scenes like a puppet on a string and you're not even aware it's happening you just know you're suffering from it unnecessarily suffering and um, let me switch hands. I got this cheesy little selfie light I got off eBay for like eight bucks. Oh, here, let me switch. Stay with me. So I realized something, and I wouldn't peel myself out of bed at 3 a.m. if I didn't have something I believe important to share with you. <clears throat> so I was born like that, right? I came from that. I mean, all I saw when I was a kid is there's not enough money. Wait till mom gets her check at the first of the month. Um, you know, we, we literally got presents from the church on Christmas. Um, um, we were always on food stamps and 
And all I heard around the house growing up is there's not enough. There's not enough money, broke. I heard arguments about, you know, money and things like that. I grew up feeling unworthy. If I had a friend in school that had, had played hockey and had his skates and hockey travel paid for, I mean, I'd break down crying because I felt like a piece of shit. And I grew up with a broken mind, not thinking I was worth more than 10, 12 bucks an hour. When I got paid $15 an hour at a job, I was like, oh my God, right? And it's like... <sighs> Companies will enslave you for 15 bucks an hour and you will live your life broke as shit Because um, that's not even enough to support a family or thing. I mean now I think I Mean I don't even want to get into that. All I want to say is that my first Landscape jobs when I started my business and I was starving for money. This is this is it. I, I think I've got it I did almost a $20,000 landscape job when I picked up this very wealthy client. It was at the turnaround after the 2009 crash and everything turned around. Um, it created a lot of wealthy people as well. So I had a client and we did like a $20,000 landscape job. I was so scared that I was working at this client's house like 60 hours a week for a month straight by myself with a wheelbarrow and a shovel and a shitty pickup truck and one helper that I was paying like, I think I was paying cash or something. And at the end of it, I made about $2,000 off of a $20,000 job. And I was actually going out on Sundays doing other side landscape jobs in order to make money to pay my bills because I had talked myself down so low that I wasn't making any money off of this big job. I was scared shitless. So my clients back then, any of them, it didn't matter. I would, oh, I gotta be more quiet than my neighbors. Any client I got or anything, as soon as they would ask me for the price to clean their windows or do their landscaping, I would immediately, I would, I would buckle under the fear of them and their big house and their nice BMWs and their cars and their Mercedes. Um, I thought that they were like aliens or, or I thought these people were so much better than me and I was such an unworthy piece of shit. I was like, how, how is this person so privileged? How is this person so much better than me? How is this person, what are, how are they so much smarter and better? Like I went to this whole victim mindset that I couldn't even believe I was getting, you know, I, my whole life I've always wanted to be successful and be a millionaire and, and, and lifestyle of the rich and famous and all that bullshit. I mean, I love God and I know materialism is bullshit. But all I'm saying is that I wanted it so bad and I felt so unworthy of it, of any type of success. And a lot of this was unconscious that to even be on a customer's property with a big circle driveway, like, I was like, oh, oh that I would crumble and collapse in front of them. And I'm gonna... I would crumble and collapse in front of them and start talking myself down. They say, how much to clean my windows? If it's 600, I couldn't even believe I could even make it. I would say, oh, uh, you know, 250, but but I, I'll do it for, I'll, I'll do it for 225. You know, it was such a cool, good, good one night. I'll do it for 199, you know, you know, 150 for the first time. I'll do it for, I'll do it for free. You, can I pay you to do your windows? <laughs> uh, how much to do my landscaping? Well, um, something normally like this would be like, like a thousand, a thousand bucks, but uh, you know, I'll do it for, 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 what do you think? What, what, what do you think? Okay, so. I was doing work for such dirt cheap and then crying about how I wasn't making any money because I was so terrified that if I told the customer that it was a it was a, the price that I wanted which the price what I wanted wasn't even literally 25 to 30 percent of what I would charge today I've literally quadrupled my prices and it's not even enough now Right, but back then, like back then, wasn't even enough to pay taxes or insurance or anything, and I was scared shitless, thinking my price was too high. I actually th thought that the customer was gonna go, "What, you piece of shit? How dare you try to rip me off? Get off my property before I call the cops on you right now and bash you all over the internet, you, you shameful, you shameful, shame, shame, shameful, uh, thieving, conniving, thieving bastard." Like, I literally thought that if I charged the customers what I thought, like, would it be anything over $15 an hour, that I was a thief. 
I actually believed that I would be ripping these customers off and I would almost cry in my truck because I was like, you know, and, and customers treated me like that. They treated me like, uh, they treated me like a, a peasant. And then I was crying. I'd come home from work with a, I'm trying not to cuss too much here. Come home from work after 90 hours of working and there's a fucking eviction notice on the door. A pink eviction notice. And I've been working 90 hours for months on end and my wife's fighting. She thinks like I've got like another kid or something she doesn't know about. She thinks that I'm like, got, she got a, you got like a drug habit or something. I'm just making stuff off. She's like, how in the hell are you working this much? And she's like, why don't you just go get a job? And, and, and I didn't, all I knew was that I had to make this thing work, right? And then I finally got an account and I sat down and legitimized my business and I'm freaking out in front of him and my own, you know, I don't even want to get into that stuff because I've ironed all that out, but I was all over it, reading the audiobooks and listening to the med the meditations, anything, I like listen to it, like, I'm on 460 books now, and no matter what I did back then, I could not break the poverty scarcity mindset, the poverty cycle that was so deeply embedded in my brain since childhood. It was the wizard behind the curtain controlling everything, no matter how, so, so here's what I would say. If you are operating in a scarcity mindset, and when I heard these things too in the audiobooks and in the programs, it made technical sense to me, but there was no integration. There was nothing that said, oh, now I get it. Holy cow. Like, if you were operating in a paradigm, a belief system that says this, you are going to act in accordance with it, you were going to act in accordance with that and nothing can change that right so so you could pull up in a rich subdivision around million dollar mansions in mercedes and ferraris right and if you think that there's not enough for you and you act like a peasant and you act broke and you feel broke and you think broke and you feel like you don't deserve it and you act that way to those customers and you tell them oh it's going to be 200 bucks then then they're going to go well, then they're going to just treat you that way. Like, I don't know, that's how you're acting, right? And then if you run around and you cry and you tell yourself the story about how you're broke and you don't have any money for the bills and you don't have any money for the winter and you can't keep gas in your car and you're you're trying to keep your cell phone on, like, you're, you're, you are creating 90% of that. You're creating that. You're creating that that because if you could press the eject button and eject out of the helicopter eject out of the plane that's crashing or something you know what I mean and, and, and jump out of your thoughts and your life and your mind heart body and emotions and, and like jump into the real world you would see that there's literally abundance all around us so if you pull up in a subdivision, you know, I don't understand old money. Uh, there's an amazing book. I was reading books by Thomas J. Stanley, uh, uh, Secrets to America's Wealthy or something. 80% of all America's wealthy are self-made millionaires. The people that have worked their ass off who came from nothing. Like, even though I had all the facts, I didn't believe it could work for me, right? You know, and I'm not saying I'm a millionaire or anything, but here's what I want to get back to. This is so deep. Okay, so... If you drive around and you see new cars everywhere and nice stuff and there's there's malls and restaurants and shopping plazas and houses and there's also the poor side of town and all that exists too and there's people that are in poverty and people that can't help that they're in poverty that go through all types of things that might not even be their fault that aren't their fault and, and my heart goes out to them so much. Dr. Wayne Dyer said that, you know, all of your suffering and crying in the world can't save, you know. A starving kid in Ethiopia or something like that now you can donate money and all this stuff but all, all that he was saying was you know all the happiness in the world can't make somebody on the other side of the world happier if you go into like quantum consciousness and fifth stage density conscious you know abundance it can actually because a butterfly flaps its wings off the coast of Japan it changes like the winds in um, Hawaii that's I believe that but 
But basically what I'm saying is in this physical density level, if you can hang with me, there's abundance all over the place. And, and it is true, if you pull up to the ocean of abundance with a little tiny, like a little tiny teaspoon, and you go, that's all that's available for me. Well, that's all that's available for you because all you have, all you can contain is that teaspoon. You can pull up to the ocean of abundance with uh, nonstop trucks and just take, or, 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 or you could hook up a pipeline to it and just let it flow into your life. So abundance in, in is about your ability, your capacity, your capacity to receive, your capacity of worthiness, your capacity of how much you believe you deserve it, right? And what is your expectation your, and your intention, the power of your intention. So if you look at like an ice cube tray, right? I love this. I thought this up and I was like, oh, I got to extrapolate on this. So if you have, oh, I got to make this video quicker because this, this thing's a battery hog. Okay. So if you take an ice cube tray, you ever put it in the sink and the water's like trickling and then it starts filling up all the other cubes in the ice cube tray? Well, if you had an ice cube tray that had like unlimited cubes, it would just keep filling it up. 20, 40, 60, 80, 120 ice cube trays, no matter how, because the capacity in the container can hold it. If you put electricity through a, a circuit board, like a labyrinth, it'll go in all those directions and make things happen, right? Well, what is your capacity to contain knowledge, wisdom, your heart, your mind, your, your motion, your wealth, like what potential do you have that's stored up and locked up behind some crazy schism that's repeatedly stopping you, the story in your head that you're telling yourself that's stopping you from being successful. Because like I said, the broke kid that I was running around flat broke, okay, Maybe some of that was true, but most of it was in my head, and I didn't realize because we're, we get so stuck in our own thoughts and we repeat them all day long like a nutcase, we're all schizophrenic, until it, it reinforces into a belief, and then we start telling ourselves the crap about our businesses. We start telling ourselves the crap about how there's no work, there's not enough money, how do you get these big jobs, I, I can't do this because of this. I do it right now in my own life and business. I do it to the point of craziness but just at a different level now right it's the bullshit story that we tell ourselves the bullshit story that we tell ourselves and reinforce over and over to the point where it becomes a belief that's like a a truman show it's like it's like a this like glass aquarium that the glass is so thick it's bulletproof and we can't even break or see out of it and we're like we're stuck in a paradigm, in a schism. If you try to tell somebody who's stuck in a nine to five job that they can break out and start their own small business doing the same exact damn thing, unless it's like they work at McDonald's because you can't just go buy a McDonald's. But if it's a service, drywall, paint, tile, plumbing, landscaping, window cleaning, uh, whatever, cement work. I mean, you could break out and start your own small business like boom. Like instantly doing it. I mean, I, 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 I kind of have the privilege to be in contact with thousands, and so do you, with these Facebook groups, thousands and thousands of, of contractors who broke out of their small businesses and took a chance and I mean, broke out of their jobs and started their own small business. They were scared. What the hell? What's going on with this camera? Okay. They were scared, and then within a very short period of time, they had plenty of work if the season was right. And now they're swamped, and they're so excited, like, oh my god, I can't believe it's actually... Now, because they broke out of the old paradigm, but a lot of 9 to fivers, if you tell them they can start their own small business, like, easy, they will literally fight you to the death in fear, because they won't do it. They'll make up every excuse of why they can't, they'll be stuck, oh my god. Just like if, you know, I can go on and on about this, but... If other people can do it, you can do it. So here's all I want to say is, and my other channel is called I Am Ability. This light must be really crappy. I got this new RX100 Mark IV. It's pretty good, but it's kind of the autofocus does suck. But whatever, I, got, I, I traded one of my other cameras for it, so now I can. Let's get the selfie screen, I can see myself. Okay, but in my other channel, I Am Ability, I talk about the recapitulation meditation. That's a pretty deep channel over there. And I learned this from Dr. Wayne Dyer. He said, I, and I want you to do this. 
when you have a day off work, I want you to lay in bed one morning, and, and I hope you can find some peace to do this. And I want you to think about your life from now all the way back, every day, every moment, every week, month, year, all the way back to as far as you can remember to when you were a little kid, every major and minor event until you were just like, you remember you were three on a tricycle and you almost got hit by that car, <laughs> right? And then, or, or I hope it was like your mom, like singing you to sleep, right? And then fast forward, I gotta get this video done, it's about to die, okay. And then come all the way back, all the way back to now. It might take an hour or two, but come back to this moment and you go, oh, whoa you'll get all this benefit and all this realization, the recapitulation meditation. Okay, I want you to be successful. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to have everything you ever wanted you in your life. I want you to break through all the negative bullshit and all the self-limiting, self-limiting beliefs. And I want you to be the shit and I want you to crush 2018. I love you and I believe in you with everything in my whole heart. If I don't know you, I wanna meet you. I love you, all right? And that love comes from a place that I don't, I don't know, but I believe, son. All right, peace. Go get them.